Although it pains me to say this, in a recent video of his, Thunderfoot made a dumb mistake. So in this video, I'm going to explain his mistake as well as the underlying problem so that you don't fall into the same line of thinking. In the video where he makes this mistake, Thunderfoot is accusing Ken Ham of being internally inconsistent. Um, matter by itself could never reduce life, no matter what energy you have. And, you know, if you, even if you've got a dead stick, you can have all the energy in the world in that dead stick, it's going to decay. Uh, and it's not going to produce uh, life. God tells Moses to impress Pharaoh with a genuinely God-approved miracle of, you guessed it, turning a stick into something alive. So like I said, Thunderfoot is accusing Ken Ham of being internally inconsistent because he says, oh, life can't come from non-life. But Ken Ham, that happens in your own Bible. But listen carefully and remember, Ken Ham believes in magic and sorcerers, not the least of whom is God. If you, even if you've got a dead stick, you can have all the energy in the world in that dead stick, it's going to decay. All the energy in the world, not all the magic in the world. Ken Ham is not claiming that stick plus magic will not get you life. He's claiming that stick plus raw energy found in nature will not get you life. And those are two different things. And I left a comment on his video to that effect. I'm sorry, Thunderfoot, but Ken Ham believes in magicians, both human ones and God. Thus, his statement to Bill Nye was categorically different than those passages in Exodus, because it was speaking of a stick by itself, and the possibility of abiogenesis, being acted upon by nature not a stick being acted upon by magic. Not nature, but rather something supernatural. I mean, basically, Ken Ham is saying, okay, Mr. Bill Nye the Science Guy, if you don't believe in magic, then how did life come from non-life? And Thunderfoot completely missed this. I think the reason Thunderfoot did this is because he didn't take the time to step back, put himself in Ken Ham's shoes, and really try to grasp how Ken Ham believes the world works. Instead, Thunderfoot leapt on the fact that Ken Ham said sticks can't become alive and ran with it without a second thought to the worldview to which that statement is supposed to apply. Another example of this kind of failure to understand the opponent's view comes in this gem of an argument which I've seen infrequently over the years, but it still comes up every now and then. Jesus couldn't have risen from the dead because after three days his body would have been so decomposed it would never work. And besides, how does a body just spontaneously start itself up after three days of being dead? Once again, this demonstrates a lack of understanding of what Christians actually believe. Really not understanding, just paying attention. For example, if a Christian believes in an all-powerful super-being who could, with his all-powerful magic and shit, bring someone back from the dead, then it's entirely internally consistent for that Christian to believe that someone rose from the dead. My point in making this video is to emphasize the fact that atheists on YouTube, and really just anyone watching this video, anyone in general, we really need to take a deep breath, take a step back, and try to get into the character of the person we're arguing with so that we really do understand where they're coming from and we can actually address their arguments. It's very easy and very tempting to pick out little sound bites from your opponent's position and hold them up like war trophies because they support your position. It's quite a bit more difficult to take those sound bites and properly place them within your opponent's worldview to see what they're actually saying and if they actually fit. Completely unrelated, I have a question for you guys. If you could have a mundane superpower, what would it be? And by mundane superpower, I mean something that you could conceivably have been born with or practiced a lot, and it's kind of unbelievable, even so, but it wouldn't get you hauled off to a government lab. It's not like laser vision or some shit. It's just kind of on the cusp of believable. So, for example, it could be super strong bones that never break, or rarely break, you'd have to like lift a truck or something, uh, maybe typing really quickly or reading and understanding it really quickly, I might go for that. But, like I said, something that wouldn't get you hauled off to a government lab that you could actually live with. So I want to know, what would your mundane superpower be? Leave a comment.